Hi guys, um, thank you for coming. Uh, I want to thank uh, Chaos Group and all the, the the team that just make something that uh, when I when I studied ten years ago or a bit further back as a student, I didn't even think that uh, something like that would anyways happen. So it's it's great that you bring too many people and it's great that too many people want to be joining and, and checking on that stuff because it's it's what we do anyways and it's it's good to, to give inspiration and to get inspired so it's it's a both good ways so thank you uh, so I'm the founder and art director of slash cube um, the studio started as a uh, personal studio freelancing and uh, eventually it grew to um, being a studio working with uh, mainly international uh, clients because we're based in Switzerland. So um, doing competitions, um, one of our uh, favorite um, teams belong to Zaha. So you'll see a lot of organic stuff and uh, very interesting uh, designs. And uh, basically the, the, way we, the way we thought about doing images anyways, as I started is, uh, when you have too many, uh, too, ma too many obstacles to, to work with, meaning time, meaning um, efficiency, meaning all the hardware issues, and you have a deadline, and you have someone that actually is stressed, because that's, that's the main key when uh, I try to describe what I do, because as I, if I say uh, I'm, I'm an architectural visualizer, people don't really get it. So I end up saying I'm an architect, which doesn't make sense, because I'm not. Uh, so the easiest way to say is that um, I do something that someone comes on a, a lot of stress at the end of its, you know, at the end of his line. So um, all the teams they come very possessed with making the best out of the least of the time they can give you, and that actually was the initiative for for me to start searching a, a way to to take the deadline into um, another level that it's flexible for me. So um, basically that means how can I make images not based on what I have as a, as a source, what I have as a software, how many CPUs I have, but uh, how can I do it efficient and fast enough um, using, let's say, a common language that the, the team that I'm working with will get it. And it doesn't have to have, it doesn't have to be the design language, so we're not talking about transparencies and we're not talking about forms. We're talking about ideas that belong to the design, but they're not part of it. So if it's a building like that, which is um, um, in, uh, in Brussels, uh, it's just blocks of glass, but uh, the idea is you have to give something, for example, um, you have, um, you have trucks and buses and cameras and so something is happening here so it's it's easy to understand that it's not like a park maybe it's like a business building it's like a committee or it's a European Commission or so that part of a small uh, adjustment on on a render that it's it's quite typical it's what became part of the images that we do so we try to to put something inside um, the design that kind of pairs with the design. And it's not part of it. They don't expect it to be there. Uh, sometimes they don't even think they can have it. So like in, in cases like these images, mainly a very rough design was, was based on what we got from, uh, from the team. But we just sat down and said, OK, it's neo-industrial, so we have to find a way to make it look like this and put people on specific ages doing stuff like co-working and, and having the the whole atmosphere of you getting what exactly it's the image. And it's not so much the quality, if it's good or if it's bright, but it's, it's, it's a bit of an essence, a bit deeper into the, um, the forms and the, 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 um, the technical issues. So, but apart from small interiors, um, we also do big... Uh, I, I think this one for China is not considered big. It's, it's mainly like a small urban master plan. But uh, again, in, in, in all these images and in all their works, kind of we, we're starting the, 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 um, 
We're starting the, the process of making the image from a different level, from what is happening to the design, uh, where the design is, how can we find elements that they're not being, let's say, addressed by the designer, because the designer is so packed with dealing with his issues, the design, the comments from his supervisor, and uh, they actually need a break, and that's how we, we come into the, the picture. And this kind of, let's say, workflow, it's not a workflow because it's not something stable and it's something that, it's a, it's a manual, but uh, let's say it's, it's, a, it's a recipe. It, it was the main element that kind of like uh, took us to the project that I'm going to be presenting. Uh, and that's, that's for, for what we do, was a big, a big success. So uh, the same here, that these are just some uh, sample uh, shots. But in, in every, I mean, we try in every, not image, but in every project to just deliver uh, not a story, but something that it connects with the viewer. Like they can find out what's happening where and what's the importance and if it's if it's tech if it's if it's something that addresses uh, technology uh, and all these it's under discussion because these are again it's competition uh, meaning we end up uh, sometimes dealing with uh, five to six images in uh, less than two weeks from the very beginning uh, so that lets that that, that leaves a lot of um, um, errors to be made if you just don't know how to follow up uh, a basic idea. Um, and again, uh, some more images, uh, interiors. I think this one is uh, um, in Mumbai, the airport. Uh, Dubai Towers. Again, it's the same process. So uh, it, it, it might seem that we can use the same ideas, um, like techniques and renders. Corona, we use Corona in cinema. Uh, but uh, all the time, we keep thinking the base, the recipe, what can we put on the image? And that's, that's, actually the, the, that, that, that's actually the difference between a good render that becomes an image, that becomes an idea that is presented with an image um, appeal to you, because it gives you the, uh, the, the opportunity to be a bit more immersive, like get out of the image something that um, it's, it's not really part of the design, but it's, it's, it's a whole, um, it's, it's part of the whole design anyways. Um, I don't know how to, um, uh, yeah, this one was the very beginning. I did that in 2014. And it, had, it was the beginning, like I started with the same idea of something that, um, you know, it's, it's, I'm happy that I'm here because uh, th from this one, uh, most of the stuff wouldn't happen if that wasn't out there. So, um, to go into the, the presentation. So the whole presentation is um, based and is made uh, using an example. So it's not a descriptive presentation like presenting the project, but giving, um, giving it to you as an, as an example on how essential it was to keep the base that we use on the simple images that we can all reference into something that it's a bit difficult to reference. So we got called from SOM um, last August, unexpectedly. Um, and uh, they actually got hired by uh, the space agency, the European Space Agency and MIT to co-work on a project um, that um, I still remember it on our first like conference call where they would uh, just try to see if I'm available as a, as a team to do the project. I didn't know what the project was. So uh, they said like, uh, okay, Thomas, we like your work, blah, blah, blah. And after 10 minutes, they're like, how much you think you cost? And um, I, I did the obvious. I said, doesn't, I, I, I cannot tell you if you don't show me something. It can be a lot of stuff, complexity, it's a landscape, it's an aerial, how many buildings, what's the scale, um, difficulty of different elements that happen, do you want it dramatic, do you want it, you know, I was 
I didn't know. So one of the guys came up and said, well, you don't have to worry about complexity and landscape and trees and skies because there's nothing like that on the moon. And I was like, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> yeah, it was a surprise. I mean, I wasn't expecting it. So the project is based on the moon. Um, one thing to have in mind is that it's not a concept. It's not something to just um, pitch an idea. It's an actual project. So SOM is actually designing uh, on a detail of the bolt, on a detail scientifically on anything that can go wrong. And actually, they, they innovate in a way um, a step into something that can easily, in, in a matter of a few years, become something very daily life. Uh, at least that's how they present it. But they, they needed to take the, the, the first step, as, as we all know, the first step. So, um, it's a new form of habitation. In few words, in two sentences, the idea is the um, South Pole on the moon, um, there's a huge crater, they picked the place, and they, they found with research in collaboration with NASA that there is ice. So uh, the basic idea is go there, go into the crater, which is some kilometers deep, and excavate ice, and make, I might be getting it wrong, but make like hydrogen, which is like a form of uh, fuel from hydrogen and oxygen, and essentially make it uh, like a deep space fuel. So in a way, very roughly, and I hope they don't cut me if they hear this, <laughs> it's like a pit stop. So they want Moon to be an essential part of uh, research, but also a pit stop for deep exploration because we can easily imagine how difficult it is to make it from the Earth for all the reasons. So that's basically it. But they had all the science somehow delivered from ESA, but they had no idea how to present it and they needed to present it to scientists that uh, had a full idea of the moon but never been there, um, had a full idea of things that can go wrong but never tried them. So in a way, they also had no idea how to actually take it into step. Uh, this is a small Five part where, after humans first can we have the volume a bit up? A new initiative is underway to bring us back, and this time, the aspiration is to settle there on a permanent basis. The project called the Moon Village is a concept for the design, planning, and engineering of the first human settlement on the lunar surface. The Moon Village is a completely new challenge for the field of architectural design. It must be a self-sufficient settlement built to sustain life in an otherwise uninhabitable setting. Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, the European Space Agency, and academia from MIT are developing a holistic vision for lunar architecture. The master plan envisions a settlement on the rim of Shackleton Crater near the South Pole, which receives near continuous daylight throughout the lunar year and is located close to water ice deposits. Ultimately, the goal of these features is to enable the project to serve much larger purposes as a platform to explore the moon in its entirety, to spur research and commercial growth and to serve as a stepping stone to achieve even greater ambitions, extending the human footprint to Mars and beyond. This is actually part of the, um, the area. Um, all these visualizations of the moon they're all part of the NASA's uh, scientific visualization studio where you can find online. And they did a great job. And I also want to thank Daniel that took like the last minute call from me and make this two minute speech. Um, but apart from all the science and the, the talk, we had to make something out of something that it's only written on books and it's, I mean, I, I guess some people don't even believe it. So, life on the moon, reality versus real. Reality is, let's conceive it as what we think is real. So, what we read, what we see, what we tend to believe. Real is what we take from, let's say, the science part. So, uh, any kind of um, 
any kind of um, photo uh, that we see that looks strange, if anybody has seen from the moon, that's, that's real. Because it's, um, it's a unique place that has a lot of stuff that uh, doesn't have a lot of stuff that we have here, and it tends to make things look bad or fake. So that was the first question, which one we pick? We pick reality or we pick real? Because the basic idea was to connect you and essentially you, the viewer, and the scientists uh, into believing that this is doable and also making a concept appeal that they can sell it or they can believe that this can happen. And uh, things started with uh, checking on uh, some books that I've personally found. This is the Apollo uh, panoramas from uh, Michael Constantine, I think. And basically, it's a, it's a research. So we started researching the basics, the ground, let's say. How does it look like? How, um, how do we not stick only on the idea that it's, it's flat, it it's, um, doesn't have anything rocky, uh, which it has, uh, that it's, it's actually not so hilly, which it is. I mean, I think Moon has um, uh, craters that are deeper than the, uh, the top of the mountain Everest. So it's a huge, uncomfortable to walk, I guess, place. Um, so we had to focus on how these things um, all together will make an image that is real, it has reality as we know it, and it also gives a bit more on to just being a descriptive scientific render. So this is real. So I still think that this is real and it's not a bad shaded viewport, something, but that's what I'm trying to, to, to say, that all that fakeness here due to no atmosphere or no wind or no nothing, it makes this extremely difficult to sell it. So if, if, you, put, if you put a house or something here, you won't sell anything. And by selling, I mean the idea. It's not about selling the land because it belongs to no one, I guess. So, and this is the, like also in a way real. So we have to believe that this is real and uh, we have to think that if we represent something, it has to be in between this and what we would think it's what can happen on the moon. Uh, and that was a struggle also for us because we, we didn't know how this would look interesting. Uh, so we set up uh, an, a, a, a recipe. So how to blend a master plan to fit in on a land that we don't know how it looks like. And it has to connect with memories we have. It has to somehow uh, present an experience that we have either lived or have seen others uh, doing, like the, the landings, uh, emotions, seeing the Earth from the moon, which is, I guess, a unique thing if you manage to live and, and see that. Sounds, space is very interesting because there's nothing. And how do you get you connected? How do you make someone get connected? How do you combine all these to achieve a connection? Um, two were the main influences that we tried to push, First Man and The Moon. If you haven't seen uh, The Moon, go see it. First Man, I guess, everybody knows. Them. And it's, it's quite interesting because First Man has the reality, in a way. It gives emotion. It gives you a lot of the memories that you, you didn't have because we never, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not that old, so I, I wasn't there when, when that happened. And then The Moon has the almost like I, uh, symmetrically, uh, the, the mirror effect, the, re the, the real thing, the daily, uh, taking out that it's amazing to go on the moon, taking out that it's amazing to see the Earth, but having uh, settled on a real environment that has the daily issues. So we needed to somehow combine these two. Uh, this is some, some shots from, from both the movies, just getting the, you know, the contrast. Uh, how the movies present the same idea, being on the moon and having achieved like uh, landing and leaving and staying not for two or three days, but for months and years and, and decades and, 
And it actually uh, gives a, a different perspective of how we think the moon will be like, because it's, it's, uh, it's very interesting to just see the two um, directions being on the same area, on the same land, but projecting something completely different. And that was something we wanted also to play with. Because, uh, again, the idea was we need images, not too many, to be able to see everything. So we want to see all in an image, if it's possible. So it has to have a balance. Uh, so the main thing is how to keep the frame, keep you interested, and directing you to the idea of the image. What is, this, uh, what is the, I the image about? And mainly, the main, main focus was the crater, of course. That's the main idea. They would just tell us, you need to focus on the crater, because you will see how thin is the, the line between being on, 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 on the master plan area and then just losing yourself on the crater. I mean, I, I've seen the model of the, the topography and it was a bit scary when I just placed uh, a human 3D and I couldn't see it. I, was, I have to go really close and then the, the vastness was like so big that I was like, oh my God, how are they going to do it? Um, so that was the thing. How do you make the elements appear normal, uh, and how do you connect with something that you have to win someone that doesn't really know about the science, and he'll just see the image and be like, yes, that's, that's, let's do it. It doesn't look so scary. Uh, again, from some thoughts from the first man, um, the idea on how they presented this silence, poetic, movement around the moon. Uh, the moon doesn't look so scary. It's interesting, the, the forms. It has this sense of reality. So it's not actually real. You don't see it so raw and uh, not interesting. But you also get the emotion, even from the movement on this scene, um, the vibration, the, the whole excitement on seeing all these unique shapes forming. and Again, not knowing the scale, because this can be uh, as vast as no one can imagine, although it seems small. So the idea was how to keep this. And then at the same time, going back to the moon movie, how do you present like a daily life? Like something that doesn't really make, uh, make it so interesting to be there because it's just a job. Um, we did a lot of stuff. The project is still going on. So a lot of stuff from that kind of comparison were used for the interiors that sadly we, we cannot uh, show here because they're still confidential. But the contrast became between these two. So the exteriors, how you present the master plan, it has to have the kind of the first man, the, the poetic, uh, the reality. And then when you go closer to the real scale where you have cables, you have infrastructure, then you end up moving slowly to the real thing, connecting with people like here, with memories, with all the stuff that, you know, it could be anywhere. Uh, that was the scale that we needed to just take it. Again, the same. I mean, it's, it's a typical day, I guess. Um, and, and also the, the ambience, the setting, the colors, the, uh, the whole idea on making it somehow believable because you have seen it somewhere. So it's not so different and so out of um, what, you, what you expect to see. Uh, color, that was also one thing that I asked them, um, how black and white it is. And they, they showed me a lot of stuff on how brown and how um, different from what we think the ground is and how soft it can be because there's a layer of dust, but it's extremely rocky. The side that they picked is actually quite flat in terms of having big obstacles, but uh, that was also something that we tried to play and understand, like, is it, is it rough and flat and like a wallpaper with just bumps? Is it dusty? What exactly happens there? And um, again, from the first month, this, this shot actually kind of portrays the, um, the approach we took. So it's, uh, it's flat, it has this discoloration, it's very dark, very contrast. Um, 
there is color on it, of course. This is a reality. It, it kind of connects you with what happened back then, so it's black and whitey in a way, with a little bit of color. But um, having also some uh, issues, like uh, some elements like the, the sun, the flooding, the atmosphere. That's why I'm saying this is a reality that doesn't really happen like that, but it helps you connect with, with, uh, with um, the area. That's why the sun was uh, the second main thing for us to use. We could not put it, we could not place the sun on the images because then it would just blow out and uh, they, they would be like, it's amazing, but we don't see what it is there. Uh, we did some first previews and they were like, very nice. The flare, it's amazing but we need to take it out because we don't see anything. Like, we don't see the very forms of the design. But they still wanted to keep that element because we needed to add some atmosphere, we needed to make dramatic, but we could not use anything that, you know, we daily use, we could not put, like, fogs, or we, we didn't have any of that. So it's actually quite easy in the end if you find how to do it, and it's extremely difficult to actually find a way to do it. So uh, we struggled a lot at the beginning, but the end result was extremely fast. And uh, again, here, like some different shots from uh, the Apollo missions, uh, how the, the, the ground is, is very, like, um, um, it's very interactive with uh, the astronauts because it's very smooth, so it leaves patterns and it, it changes a lot and it has like bumps and, and all these things on a, on, a, on a close scale because th the size is huge, we could not just do it anywhere. Uh, but on the close scale, they had to be apparent in a way, but not so scary, so they don't, you know, they didn't want to have an image where the astronaut could just easily stumble upon a rock and, and die. They didn't want to present that if you go there and you stumble, you just, you're left there and you die. But it needed to have some of that elements. This is apart from the moon movie, again. Um, here it's, how I, I like the idea of sewing the sun without sewing it and, and slowly, slowly getting into and giving the idea of the sun. Like, it's, it's, very, it's a very important element to show where the, where the light comes from, what's the direction, and how powerful is the light. Because that was the second thing that we needed to care about, the, the power, the intensity of the light, but also the um, difficulty that if you put too much intensity and you bring it here, you might start losing elements that, in our case, they should have been there a bit more visible. So we studied a lot how they perceived the idea of the glariness and the blariness and the, the camera, the lens issue and, and the stars and, and all these combinations that they give some atmosphere that doesn't really exist. So again, this stays on the, on the reality part, just to make you believe. The third one was the earth rise. So important, how do we deal with giving an image that uh, makes sense for everybody to understand where you are. And we came with the idea, let's make an Earthrise image. Uh, so we have, instead of the full moon that everybody goes like, wow, and you have like light coming. If you go on a forest, you have light and it's like so bright. And how do we do that from the part of having a full Earth? Uh, because that was also something that they, they, they they wanted to do, they wanted to have that appeal, but they didn't know if it would be like, um, they didn't know if it would be helpful or if it would be too much or if it would be too sci-fi and people would be like, it's just too fake. And we propose also, let's go into the creator and create this idea of whatever and then you have the earth and you have the master plan and everybody goes like, wow, I wanna go there or wow, it makes sense, it's a bit sci-fi, but it can be real because, I mean, if, if this happens on Earth for a full moon, I guess when it's a full Earth, you have the same appeal. So we also went into studying how to do that. And um, last but not least, uh, not last, uh, the sound. Um, again, how do you play with sound? In this case, was sound from like um, uh, machines. Uh, in our case, we connected uh, with uh, actual sound from 
um, the audio conversations from the Apollo missions, because we needed again to put emotion. So we could cover the image side, the display, but we needed also to cover the, the sound side of getting you connected with uh, the project. That's a small part uh, that I find very uh, amazing from, from the first one. I'm, I'm sure you know it. It's when uh, they just go out from the spaceship for the first time and how it's presented, it's, for me, it's very unique. it. So that's actually what happens. I mean, you have nothing, but the, the presence of the nothing actually gives you how the change from the human space goes out into something that is completely non-human um, friendly. Uh, and, you know, it, it was just too, too amazing. And this is what we try to do on the teaser, like put the audios and put the controls and put the, the, the steady um, the steady intensified uh, odd, um, sound um, uh, um, direction, let's say, on, on, on the teaser. So you have uh, communications, you have uh, sounds from the missiles, you have audio controls, just again to, to convince with emotion. Infrastructure, the last, um, mainly how this all will work to make it look believable, cables, equipment. Uh, they had the main structures, but the rest we had to direct and we had to find ways to make it look like it's been inhabited for like 10 or 20 or 30 years. So they, they, these they laid it open to us. They said, do whatever you want, but uh, we'll check how good it looks. So um, we researched again how things happen, I mean on Earth, but it could eventually happen the same thing. Um, because again, the details were also um, you know, it was part of the, uh, the whole idea. So let's go into the project. Uh, these were the categories that we described, that we just kept, and we did most of them. So starting with the beginning, this is the master plan. So uh, this is a huge area. These are the habitats where everything happens, and bigger ones and smaller ones, and these purple ones are a forest of solar towers that give power, and the landers and everything. And the, the, the part above is the crater, which is this. So, so that's the crater, that's the, the space we had, the, 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 um, the model. But you get, you get the idea of the size. It's, I mean, it's huge and it's, it's deep. So um, we had a, a lot to do. And there you can see a bit on the model. Um, these are the houses connecting with them. The lines that you see, it's the, um, the, how the, the cabling and the infrastructure would be connected with. Uh, the landers and uh, the crater is relatively flat, the area that was helpful, uh, thankfully, because uh, they, they wouldn't be able to do it. So that, that's what we got. So that, that was all we got, how the cabling is and how the, 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 the road system will be, uh, because it's, it's a phase that goes on and on and you know, it progresses. So we start with trying to find out how we're going to deal with aerial, the master plan, the crater, the earth rise, and uh, some extras that they asked for from uh, the, the previous updates. Uh, so working the ground. We worked a lot with Quixel eventually because that was the only way to do it. Um, I, I'm fascinated by how good I am without knowing exactly what I'm doing in terms of coding and writing and picking. But with Quixel, it was so easy to just use the mixer and do stuff that could resemble this. So if we go, uh, this was pre-Quixel. So that was like the first a um, few patches on the very, very first days. We didn't have the habitat, so I used the capsules. But we tried to at least start doing the, um, the whole idea on, on, on putting some of the things inside, uh, the sound, the atmosphere, and everything. And here is a small clip from... So it's, it's quite a basic um, 
process, uh, we find, you know, we, we found the, 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 the satyrs that were close to what would be resembling as, 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 as moon ground. And uh, from, from that, we just, you know, we went guessing and putting and, and trying to match with uh, uh, references from the photos we had and from the feedback we were getting. So we would send something on the ground and it would be like, yes, yes, uh, make it a bit more flat. Yes, it could be like that. Let me send it to the scientists. And the, the scientists would be like, uh, take a bit of the rocks there, put the discoloration, maybe. Don't make it so believable. Don't make it so rough. So that was an easy process with the Quixel to actually start doing it. Um, we could change things quite easy. Uh, we, 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 we weren't going yet into the model, so that was a, a time to save. And we could easily test also if the thing we see connects with the reality we think that happens when, when you have to deal with the, the moon ground. And we had some versions for the foreground, so we had versions that are more, let's say, rough and more cratery. And then we had also versions that we could test out and put on the render and check that had a bit more flat. So it's, it's all about um, you know, trying to make it look like it would be part of it. And um, this is a bit, takes a bit more. And if we check the, this I think was the, uh, the, flat, the flatter one. And if we go to the other one, which is similar, this one has a bit more of a bumpy, cratery filling that could be on the edge of the crater because they told us, you know, the crater is bumpy and rocky and the other part is very flat. So try and make something of, you know, making, making it look like the crater is a bit more of a uh, place that they won't be able to build, but they, they need to go down there. So they had to have this, um, you know, kind of, uh, uh, of a contrast. And uh, this was again after with the use of some um, Quixel versions. Um, picking also the frame, um, how do you connect? So the crater is always here on the left side and uh, we used a lot of assets that could resemble from the photos we had from, again, from Megascans. And uh, again, it, trying to just make it, um, um, ma make, make the things we separated, the color, the sun intensity, the framing, the camera, the lens, the sun, very important, it's South Pole, we all know, no, we all know that on the South Pole, we don't know, but we'll find out, the sun is very low. So they said, well, you cannot go more than eight degrees, seven degrees, nine degrees, because it's a constant sunset in a way. So that was good because we could hide a lot of stuff that we didn't want to be able to see. And if we move into the actual image, so the crater, and uh, starting on a very basis. So again, the connection that we wanted to make, seeing that this is the crater, it's completely black. So that's the crater, there's no sun. The sun comes from the, from the other side. And uh, this was the very, very first preview. And they were like, yes, that's the area we want. Uh, nothing was still on that preview even uh, discussed. But then moving on the uh, phase that we are now, this is the actual um, aerial now. So again, we have the crater. Um, we're trying to focus on the idea that things happen on the crater. So we have like robots and, and, and NASA modules uh, moving around. And again, the whole master plan has a sense of scale and detail. So these are the solar towers which are quite big, but you don't know how a solar tower looks. And this is the ISRU modules uh, being 3D printed with uh, the ground of the moon and laser 3D printed to get uh, hardened and make, it, make them look like concrete and protect, protect the, the, um, the scientists uh, from uh, solar radiation and everything. But if you go here, you can see like the, the huge moon rover, which is, I think, um, seven, eight meters six maybe, uh, uh, seven, eight meters on the, the length. So the whole thing is very, very big. They, they needed to show the scale of everything, so they needed to see a detail that eventually can connect you with how big this is. 
And this was the expanded version. So again, you have to feel that the creator is a lot more powerful than what you have. And you, you need to feel that you're literally uh, at the edge. Um, that was, uh, I would say, a successful image because they weren't expecting that kind of aerial. The aerials that we showed, uh, that we were shown, were very scientific renders, very typical bad renders that they were happy, but they wanted something more like interesting. And if we see a small breakdown on the Photoshop file, we, we tend to do Photoshop. On this project, we did a lot more 3D. So the Photoshop was a, a good ending because we didn't have to focus too much on it. So most of the stuff were just completely rendered. So this is the raw render, the structure of the file, uh, channels, yes. Um, that's how we will, uh, how, how, how we work. So reflection, here you can see a lot of fine detail on the cable system. Uh, we we hand-painted all the cables and the connections between the, the different habitats. So again, it's a lot of detail. It's a lot of um, uh, reality and a lot of real aspect to it. So they need to be able to be um, um, believable. So they have to be there and live for like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. I guess the expansion is quite long, maybe a century afterwards. So here you see the masks. And um, actually, the Photoshop was mainly color grading, trying to match again the, the, um, trying to match the initial references we had. Because that's, that, that was the main goal, to just try and go there. But uh, the whole 3D. Um, craziness that went on this master plan actually was more helpful than more struggly. And the good thing is working with uh, Corona on the moon without indirect, it's extremely fast. So this render, uh, I think 8,000 resolution on, uh, on a good PC, but not super, super great PC or whatever. It took, I think, 20 to 25 minutes. So I was like, we can do more projects on the moon. <laughs> we get paid a lot more. We spend a lot less time waiting for the render. But I didn't tell them because I knew if I would tell them, it's easy. Just change it. The render is fast. They would just, I don't want to say the word, but they would just screw me over. They would be like, it's so fast. Can you do the changes? No. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a, a fun fact. Because I was scared at that level. I was like, I don't know how much it's going to take. So I'll come in two days. But uh, after 20 minutes, I was like, oh, it's done. That's good. So I placed more 3D modeling because then I had less work to do on Photoshop. And uh, moving on to the Earthrise, again, that was the very first thing we sent to them. So it could be something like that. So you're inside the crater, you have to feel that you're inside, and you have the earth rise. You have the light, so you connect with how believable and true in the reality sphere this could be. Because that's the selling point of that image. It's not so much about what happens on the actual area, but it's what you feel when you will eventually be able as a scientist, as an astronaut, to go there. And um, it's, it's, it's like a look into the future. But again, we don't know if this is like that. There's nothing that looks like that that I know that this is close to a reality. So again, you have to somehow connect. You connect with the foreground elements. You connect where things happen and you think, OK, things work because they, 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 they leave there. And you'll, you'll have to find a way to put the atmosphere, the dynamic. Maybe the sky has uh, stars, the galaxies. Uh, we had to find a good balance between all of these. And um, so a, a quick. Um, light mix, um, sample from cinema. So um, trying to compose lights to create the idea of the earth rise. So one light would be the earth uh, casting on the ground 
uh, avoiding all the necessary habitat modules to be light and blue, and then separating different lights to just hit the habitats, the houses, to hit the astronauts, the cables, putting a lot more reflection on the golden cables because they have to be like foiled golden to just withstand radiation because they're exposed. And um, you have life. You have some kind of like volume light coming that will eventually be covered by the, the sky. So we exaggerated on putting things that won't happen, but we try to just bring them back like 50% at the end so that the amount that the amount of the effects that we put at the end don't really hit the eye on you being fake. Uh, and of course, the main thing had to be you have to look at the earth, like connect with how important it is that you are there and doing the same thing as you know, we do here with the full moon. So this is the final image. Um, it's a bit bright, but you get the idea. So the galaxy, the scale, the dust from whatever happens here, small detail, the cables, the ground, the rough ground, the, the scale of the astronauts going into the crater, and all of these had to be somehow, you know, not super um, stylized. They liked how, you know, it would feel to be there. The, the solar towers playing with the color, the reflection, the light of the sun, the, the light of the Earth. Uh, and again, the main problem is the Earth is quite low from the South Pole, so you cannot put it up. Uh, it could have been lower, it could have been here. I mean, this is not correct by all means, and the stars are completely wrong, I guess. But uh, still, even for ESA to see that, and knowing that some of the stuff are not really there, they were like, it's, it gives something that you know, we need from that image. Not so much the, the real thing that happens up, but the, the recipe of getting you connected with something and feeling a lot more natural, although this is completely fake and it's completely unnatural. And again, a small breakdown. That's the raw render, okay. Again, it didn't have too much work afterwards. Um, because again, uh, only because I knew the, the structure of the file getting from one point to the other. I wasn't trying to think at that point, oh, let's try this, oh, uh, if I put it more yellow, uh, ah, if I put, you know, everything was structured up to the point here without uh, the need to check on that level. Because again, uh, it's an interesting project, a lot of research, but when it comes to the phases of the images, we only have, um, I'm not exaggerating, five to six days to make two or three images. Because they always have a small, 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 small gap that they come to us and say, okay, it's Thursday, next Wednesday, the latest, we need three more updates. So go, go get them. And uh, yeah, slowly it's building up, showing um, important stuff, um, connecting, putting, making, th that's the fake thing. But still, you, I mean, I don't really, um, you know, I don't really um, care about looking at it. But, you know, they want to see the habitats. I mean, I'm not sure if it's, if it's going to be so bright, but I don't care at that point. I only care about making the whole balance between the Earth, what, wh where am I, where am I placed, and um, how, much of a, uh, how much of a dynamic it gives to me. So I'm focusing on the Earth, that's, that's the main thing. And the frame also helped, the two by one almost, uh, because you have a, a better sense of uh, left and right. So it gets you a bit more uh, interested into looking a lot more details that are less important, but give you a frame, give you a story, and then more important as we go up, that gives you the main thing, why you're there, and then the Earth, which is the last, but the, not the least uh, important element. Two more shots, quite uh, very fast. So this is the, the lander, um, landing and going up. They, 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 they wanted this um, 
uh, image presenting uh, this, this hill, 3D printed uh, thing that can uh, prevent the habitat from getting all that dust and explosion from the landers. So we try to make the lander looking very like powerful and getting all that dust that actually helped the atmospheric part. So again, uh, the recipe on making the image a bit more dramatic, although scientifically correct with uh, all the elements that are around it and how this is being built and, and the form and everything. And then from the part of the Earth, how it all starts. So how do you employ the habitat into the SpaceX um, uh, Falcon uh, uh, missile, and then again presenting it into a way that uh, it's believable. So you have cables, you have all the small detail, the infrastructure, uh, the, um, the, the whole building up of the hangar. So we also research how this looks like, the color coding of the yellows and everything. And finally, the teaser you can watch if you haven't watched it from the keynote. Thank you. Now, any of you that is maybe interested in working on the moon and maybe some other planets, I guess, I hope, or not, you can uh, check with us on your portfolio and your ideas about how to make this even more interesting. So, thank you. <laughs>